next concept here and just kind of ties into why you you know you should only do one thing is that quality is key to a successful initial product launch but quality is actually very difficult and <laughs> most i think junior developers uh, don't realize this because they they go through all these tutorials and they set up like you know a clean like Yelp clone or Instagram clone or whatever in like two, three weeks. And they go like, oh, wow, coding is easy. I can make this like polished thing, you know, so quickly. Um, but what they don't realize is that underneath, they haven't actually built a product that's that good. Like once you actually go out, go, kind of go past the, the shiny veneer and you actually really push what you've built from tutorial, it falls apart extremely easily. And we'll, you know, we'll break this down. So when it comes to like kind of the overall software, Meta, what something I've seen, um, not just for junior engineers, but this is for everybody, is that innovation is extremely overrated and execution is extremely underrated. Everyone is kind of, they fall in love with these romantic tales of this person, you know, like these kind of like Thomas Edison, like stories uh, where they invent something completely novel and it takes over the world. And, you know, the, the, the key to their success was like their, their creativity and, and, you know, their brilliance. And this is the exception, not the norm, especially now. When it comes to a lot of the um, big apps, and my favorite example is WhatsApp, and I know a lot about WhatsApp because actually, you know, I worked at Facebook and I know engineers who worked on it, is the apps are not good because they're completely unique. WhatsApp is actually the opposite. WhatsApp is actually good because it's not unique. Um, WhatsApp, while it did release relatively early on the App Store, has always been behind the other messaging apps when it comes to features. Like they took a long time to add video calling. They were two or three years behind. They took a long time to add stickers. They took a long time to add almost every kind of table stakes messaging app. But the reason why WhatsApp is successful is because the quality of the app is extremely high. It's, it's very polished, uh, in particular on Android. So WhatsApp, a lot of its users are actually outside of the first world. A lot of users are in developing markets. And in particular, it's because WhatsApp spends a ton of time just refining their Android app so that it performs anywhere. Like you have stories of WhatsApp managing to send messages like after an earthquake like takes down like 50 to 70% of a country's communication infrastructure. That is how amazing WhatsApp is when it comes to like handling edge cases and functioning in like really low resource environments. Their Android app goes back like 15 Android versions. So you can run it on an Android phone that's like nine years old. It is absolutely crazy how far WhatsApp is willing to go in order to preserve quality. And they're happy to sacrifice the innovation factor for it. Like, I don't, I honestly do not think any like kind of new shiny messaging app feature has come out first on WhatsApp. I don't think it's happened and that's completely fine. And this is kind of you know, leads into the next point, which is win with quality. And you want to do this because quality is where the real learning comes in. And this is especially true for big tech. I know a lot of folks in, in software, a lot of folks on this call, probably their goal is to work on big tech. And a lot of folks have asked me like, you know, what makes, what makes the engineers at big tech unique? Like what skills do they have that merits like this amazing job that they have that others don't? It's because they're really good with quality because when you are working with such a big scale, you're working with hundreds of millions of users, you're going to have like all these performance problems because your variance is super high, right? Like when you're a startup and you're just starting out, like your initial kind of group of users could be a bunch of people with iPhones in San Francisco, very low variance. Um, you could probably write whatever code you want and it'll work because, you know, they, they're in a high developed country. They have good network and they have a really high quality phone. But once you have a billion users, you're going to have like on Android in particular, you're going to have like people on like 10,000 different phones, 10,000 different screen sizes, 10,000 different amounts of RAM. A lot of them are going to have really crappy RAM. And you have to figure out how to write an Android app that performs. And similarly, if you're a backend engineer, you have to figure out how to create a protocol and that can perform even in low network environments. So these are the things you have to think through when it comes to scale, when it comes to really ensuring the quality of your experience. So when you kind of take that mentality to your side projects, it's going to carry over to your work. I, I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of as I went through the exercise uh, before, you really need to think through the edge cases when you're building out the product. Don't just kind of be like, oh yeah, this is, only, only going to affect five for 10% of users. I'm just like not going to deal with it. 
in V1, you, you shouldn't have that mentality. Um, users aren't going to notice and you're really kind of choking off like the, the best kind of learning that you can get building side projects if you do that. And you know, going back to the users, this goes to the next point, which is angry users are very loud. So there's also like a very kind of tactical reason you should do this is if you don't think through like, you know, these edge cases and you don't approach your side project with this mentality of I'm going to polish it so that it's, it is like a bulletproof product that can handle any kind of situation and like never leaves user in a bad spot. If you don't do that, you're going to, you're going to have bad reviews and then you're not going to have momentum in the beginning. And the, the math proved this, proved this out. So, I mean, we've probably seen this and we probably like felt it ourselves. Um, when you are dissatisfied with an experience, you're frustrated, or angry with an experience, you are much more inclined to say something, you know, ideally in public, like leave a review on Yelp or Google location, Google places, something like that right? Because people don't like being angry. But if you have a, a decent or good experience with, you know, an app or product, you don't really feel a huge pull to leave a review. You just, you just kind of expect it as a consumer, right? You know, customer is always right. So like, let's say you have, you know, a hundred users to really sick, kind of make this concept of a hundred, like, you know, out of a hundred percent, very clear. If you have 10 users who have a bad experience and 90% who have like, you know, a functional smooth, like decent experience, it's very likely that like among the 90 people who have good experience, only like three will actually take the time to leave, you know, a review on your, on your app. But among those 10 angry users, there's also a good chance that there's going to be three or more people who leave a bad review on your app. Right. So even though your app has a 90% success rate, like the happy flow executes 90% of the time, it's possible that your rating could be like a three out of five because of those 10 people, three people left the one star review of those 10 angry people. And of those 90, like, you know, like, you know, content people, only three of them left the five-star review, right? So that balances out. You only have three stars out of five, which is horrible. Um, so like it's the, the math really does um, kind of force you to write like a high quality product. So yeah, follow the yeah. numbers, follow the math. <laughs> and Alex, I really like the uh, example that you talked about earlier with WhatsApp. Um, I mean, I think everyone here probably has heard about WhatsApp or uses WhatsApp. Actually, like if you, <clears throat> if you use WhatsApp, every single day, uh, give me a thumbs up on Zoom. Like go into the reaction. I just want to kind of get a really quick sense of, you know, I mean, I think WhatsApp is just ubiquitous, right? Literally billions and billions of people use WhatsApp every single day. And, and I think what Alex mentioned is 100% correct. They win because it just works. You open up WhatsApp, I know what I'm going to get. That mantra or that mentality holds even more so for people like me and you, indie developers who are hacking on something on the side. Because here's the harsh reality. When Alex and I review a project that someone posted, our expectation typically is really low. The vast, vast majority of these personal projects are simply not very good. Like within a couple of minutes, I can tell you at least three or four pretty major bugs or like design issues that like just, I can't really use the app anymore. And so when you're able to, and I think that assumption is there for most people, when you download an app, I'm trying to do this thing, but like almost always there's some issue. And so when your app d doesn't have an issue and it actually just works, like the core flow just works. It doesn't take that long to do it. It's very, very refreshing. And that's how you're able to actually get an audience of people who recommend your app. You have that high quality and that's really valuable for your own momentum to keep making updates. And you can add on those features later on when you get time. But the main thing here is that focus on quality and focusing on quality will almost always take you longer than you, than you expect.